Welcome to Scrub Talks, where we delve into unusual clinical cases that challenge our medical expertise. And today we have an unusual case that pushed our analytical and problem-solving skill limits. So if you are ready to expand your medical knowledge, do hit the thumbs up button below and let's dive in. I'm super excited to be sharing with you all one of my doctor house moments as a clinical biochemist. This happened when I was working as an associate professor. I received a call from one of our pediatricians asking if a blood sample of a neonate born out of full term normal delivery can be sent for both glucose and ammonia estimation. This phone confirmation is because ammonia estimation involves lots of pre-analytical considerations. For example, the sample has to be collected in a K2 EDTA tube. It has to be transported in ice and it has to be analyzed as soon as possible. Because inborn error of metabolism is one of the areas of interest for me, I use this phone call to get further information on the case. And I was told that uh, there was a history of second degree consanguinity. This neonate had presented with the movement disorders as well as with respiratory difficulties. After ruling out many other medical causes, because hypoglycemia and hyperammonemia due to urea cycle disorders can present with such neurological manifestations, they wanted an estimation of glucose and ammonia. What we anticipated was either hypoglycemia or hyperammonemia. On the contrary, and interestingly, we observed both hypoglycemia and hyperammonemia. As I've already told you in all my sessions on inborn errors of metabolism, whenever you find both hypoglycemia and hyperammonemia, it is either fatty acid oxidation defect or pyruvate carboxylase deficiency. So we had already narrowed down our diagnosis to two, it's either fatty acid oxidation defect or pyruvate carboxylase deficiency. Because the management of these two conditions is different, and because non-ketotic hypoglycemia is pathognomonic of fatty acid oxidation defect, we wanted to further work it up by getting urine sample for organic acid estimation and by getting a dried blood spot for tandem mass spectrometry analysis. And as expected, in this neonate, we observed an elevation of acetoacetate and beta-hydroxybutrate that was ketosis, which means it is not fatty acid oxidation defect. So probably it's pyruvate carboxylase deficiency and that was further substantiated by tandem mass spectrometry analysis which revealed high alanine and low aspartate. If you want to know why high alanine, when there is pyruvate carboxylase deficiency, pyruvate cannot be converted to oxaloacetate so pyruvate becomes alanine. So high alanine is a feature of pyruvate carboxylase deficiency. No oxaloacetate, so no aspartate. Low aspartate is also a feature. So combining all these, we made a diagnosis of pyruvate carboxylase deficiency for that neonate. Of course, confirmatory diagnosis would be enzyme assay and the whole genome sequencing to detect mutations. But because of feasibility issues and affordability issues, we did not further work it up. But what we could do was to give a, a right dietary recommendation, including a frequent small meal, biotin supplementation and the odd chain triglyceride supplementation. Biotin supplementation because pyruvate carboxylase is dependent on biotin. Odd chain triglyceride because odd chain fatty acids on oxidation give rise to propionyl CoA that can act as a precursor for oxaloacetate which will support gluconeogenesis which will avoid hypoglycemia. I am still in touch with the parent and with the then neonate who is now almost 4 year old. Of course there is a global development delay uh, but the child is still surviving and thriving. So this is one of uh, the gratifying experiences for me as a clinical biochemist. I hope you all acknowledge the fact that a conceptual understanding of biochemistry is essential for you to not only make a diagnosis of a disorder, but also to manage uh, the patient the right way. Thank you for joining us on this captivating medical journey. If you enjoyed this video and want more such exceptional cases, do subscribe to Prep Ladder's YouTube channel for the latest updates. Stay curious, keep learning and we'll see you in the next episode.